Question number eight on the test three review for math 1033 involves a rational function. And what we're asked to do with each of the parts of the question is we're asked to evaluate that function at a particular value. So let's go ahead to my paper and look at the function. We'll decide why it's called rational, and then we'll learn how to put numbers into the domain. So we have, ooh, here we go. Come on with me. Let me get your camera situated for you. Here we are. This is question eight. The function f of x equals 5x divided by x squared minus 16. The reason this is called a rational function, the numerator is a polynomial, and the denominator is a polynomial. So this is the ratio of two polynomials, thus the term rational function. Now, one of the things I always tell my students to remember from arithmetic, remember in arithmetic that you were always taught the denominator can never become zero. You're never allowed to divide by zero. For example, 5 divided by 0 would turn out to be meaningless junk. If I wrote it the other way, 0 divided by 5, that's cool. That would turn out to be 0. Keep that in mind with rational functions. Never allow the denominator to become 0. If it does, the expression is meaningless. It's not a number. OK, when I'm asked to find f of 0, remember this value. 0 is an x value, it's input. So I go to my function, and every place I see an x, I plug in a 0. So I have 5 times 0 divided by 0 squared minus 16. And then I do the arithmetic. 5 times 0 is 0. In the denominator, 0 squared, of course, is 0. 0 minus 16 is negative 16, and 0 divided by negative 16 would give me the answer 0. So I do get an answer, and the answer is 0. On part b, I'm asked to find f of 4. Now let's remember, okay, sort of a little snapshot picture here. The function was f of x equals 5x divided by x squared minus 16 we're asked to find f of 4. 4 is an input value. It's a domain element. Every place you see an x in this function, you plug in a 4. 5 times 4 on the top. And on the bottom, we would have what? 4 squared minus 16. I always like to tell my students when they're plugging into a function, Put what you're plugging into the function in little safety nets. It's almost like you're, you're tossing a letter in a P.O. box, okay? Every place you see that post office box, you put in that letter. Okay, in the numerator we have 20, but we run into trouble in the denominator. 16 minus 16 becomes 0, and 20 divided by 0 has no meaning. 20 divided by 0 does not exist. Sorry. So basically, in this particular problem, we would write not defined. Now, what I try to teach my students, don't put something like empty set, because empty set means you're solving an equation and there are no answers. 20 divided by 0 just doesn't exist, period. So the answer is not defined. You could also write does not exist. And my final question is to find f of negative 4. Now, if you recall again, the function f of x is 5x divided by x squared minus 16. That's my basic function. This time I'm plugging in a domain element of negative 4. So I would get 5 times negative 4 in the top, the numerator, and the denominator would become negative 4 in parens squared, always put the input in parens, minus 16. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Then on the bottom, we run into the same problem again that we had in the previous example. 
negative 4 quantity squared is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. Negative 20 divided by 0 is garbage. Now the best way to say garbage in algebra talk is to say it's not defined. Now, this course that we're studying is Math 1033, Intermediate Algebra. Those of you going on into the college algebra, which for some of you is the next level, what I'd love for you to say to yourself is the number negative 4 is not in the domain of this function because when you tried to plug it in, you ended up getting something that was not defined. So negative 4 did not belong in the domain of f, nor did 4. But the number 0 did belong because we actually got an answer. Just a little, just a little thing to help you out in college algebra. Thank you.